Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, I uh, wanted to continue the series on budget bushcraft gear, and I'm out on a hike today with one of the haversacks I showed in my last video. And I want to talk about some of the cooking gear that you can take along with you that's inexpensive, doesn't cost a lot, and uh, surprisingly good. So, stick around, we're going to get into it. Alright, so in the last video we talked about these haversacks and how these are such great um, items to take out on a hike. Low cost, easy to find, all over the internet. So what I wanted to show is a kit that I put together based on this whole um, video series of budget bushcraft gear. And uh, particularly I want to talk about cooking gear and things that you would take out in your, in your bag to uh, brew up some coffee or you know hold your water whatever so first thing is water containers don't necessarily have to be expensive items you don't have to have a new Nalgene or Camelback uh, sometimes just a, a good old-fashioned heavy-duty water bottle from the, the gas station will work and if you're diligent about cleaning them you can always reuse them until they wear out and then just buy another one so <clears throat> multi-purpose item very inexpensive uh, it costs hardly anything under two dollars and you've got a container that you can at least use a couple of times uh, to stay hydrated. Next thing I wanted to talk about is this cook kit that I put together. I think probably one of the best um, cook kits on the market today that is inexpensive um, and does a great job are these Stanley uh, adventure cook sets. You can find these at Walmart for about 15 bucks and they are stainless steel. They have a, a locking lid, a handle, a lid with a strainer, So you can see that there's graduation marks in here so you can actually measure what you're going to cook and then as a bonus they come up they come with these two uh, coffee cups and these are just a, a heavy-duty plastic um, I'm only bringing one of my kit because since this is a solo hike I really don't need two cups but it does come with two so for 15 bucks, you have a really nice stainless steel uh, container that you can actually throw in the fire, boil water with, and cook your lunch or make your coffee. So inexpensive and uh, probably one of the best beginner items out there on the market. And you can find these almost at every Walmart I've been into has these currently in stock. Now the only thing that I've done to mine is I've added this uh, split ring to the to the lid. It normally comes with a plastic tab. I cut that off, put the split ring on here, and the reason I do that is, is when you lock the lid, now you can actually hang this over a fire. You can't do that with a lot of other pots, so. And all you have to do is put a chain through it, or a toggle, or a little piece of rope, hang that over your campfire, and now you can boil water without putting it right directly in the fire. Another item is the stove. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different types of stoves on the market. Um, gas bottle, uh, wood burning, uh, fuel tabs, all, all sorts of things. But one of the earliest and cheapest uh, types of stoves that you can find is the old soup can stove. I'm sure hobos have been using these for years and they still work great. This is just a uh, soup can um, that I drilled some holes around so I can stick these cut down tent pegs and they go in here.
and that's going to support my pot. Cut out a feed port for the for the wood, and then added some some uh, holes down at the bottom so that it actually draw the heat up. And these do pretty well. Um, I think one thing I want I would do with this can is I'm going to actually drill a second set of holes that are lower so that if I want to burn alcohol in here or um, espit tabs. I can do that and we'll look at that later but I did do a video on building one of these things uh, one of my earlier videos so I'll put a link on that and you guys can check that out but you know no need for fancy stoves when everybody has some soup cans laying around in their pantry and they can build one and this one nests perfectly with the Stanley pot and then with a couple of tent stakes you've got a pretty decent setup to do a nice little twig stove so Another cheap alternative is the hobo can stove. Now another type of stove that I use a lot um, is the Espit stove. And you can actually find these uh, at Walmart and a lot of other um, sporting goods stores. And what these are, originally I think they were designed for the German military and they fold out like this and they burn a solid fuel tab and then the stand is what you put your pot on right here this little folding stand now these are very inexpensive and they're not always the greatest thing in the world these tabs uh, are a little finicky uh, sometimes it takes two tabs to actually get a boil some people can get a boil with one it just really depends on the condition so one thing I always do is I always like to put a screen around mine, and this is just some heavy-duty aluminum foil. And uh, by putting a screen around it, you're going to block the wind and concentrate the heat on the bottom of the, st of the pot, so it's going to work a lot better than uh, without it. And on a day like today, where it's really windy, this is going to be really crucial. So, another cheap option for cooking your lunch when you're out on the trail, uh, the Espit stove been around for a long time. This is the military version, uh, the German military version, but they're, the civilian versions are available, like I said, uh, at Walmart and other sporting goods stores, and they're very inexpensive. I think they're, they're probably under $15, so just another option for cooking your lunch. I think a lot of people feel that they need or want to have in their kit is some type of grill to cook with, and folding grills uh, can get pretty expensive and also they're kind of large uh, but another option is to actually find a little grate from like a toaster oven and cut it down to size to fit your bag and now you got a little little uh, grilling surface just cut a couple rocks underneath that put a fire underneath it now you can you can roast up some hot dogs or or whatever so another inexpensive option uh, for cooking <coughs> You know, another great way too to start a fire and get your fire going when you're cooking is uh, this homemade remedy of cotton balls with petroleum uh, jelly. Really easy to make, um, very efficient uh, fire starter. And uh, we'll just we'll light one up here real quick. I'll show you how quickly these light and how long they burn. You don't have to spend a lot of money on your cook gear, and certainly don't have to spend a lot of money on your utensils. Uh, a simple wooden spoon from the dollar store and a little bit of sandpaper to get down a nice thin edge on it makes a great um, stir spoon and eating spoon for your kit. Um, I cut the handle down on this one, made it shorter, 
and sanded down the, the lip of it so I can actually flip food with it if I have to. So it's kind of a spatula, but it's also a great eating spoon. Um, inexpensive and cheap. So once you're done with it, you know, once you've worn it out or whatever, you can pitch it and get a new one. So don't always have to have the most expensive stuff to have fun. Mm. Alright, so we saw that the uh, petroleum jelly cotton ball I think that thing burned almost five minutes before it finally went out. So that plenty of heat to actually uh, warm up some water. But you know, if you're using it as a fire starter and adding some sticks and twigs to that, it's definitely gonna get the fire going, keep it going long enough that you can boil your water and cook your food. So you know, everything I showed here is very inexpensive, all under 20 bucks. Things that you can add to your kit. And if someone is new to this bushcrafting and camping and, and going out, uh, this kind of stuff is really easy and inexpensive to put together. And then if you can see if they like it or not, um, especially for kids, great for kids. Uh, you don't have to spend tons of money. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.